let me present you with an all too familiar situation. You're on Amazon shopping for wall decals of two friendly looking seniors in a golf cart for your dorm room and or nursery. But this thing is gonna set you back 16 bones. You don't have that kind of dough. What do you do? Well, I know what you're probably saying right now. Sam, I've been in this situation more times than I can count, but there's nothing you can do. That's just life. Not everyone can afford that wall decal of two old people in a golf cart. But what if I told you that due to hyperinflation measures taken by Argentina's central bank and a bizarre loophole in German visa cards, you could get this sticker for like $9 by paying for it in Argentine pesos? Well, now we're talking. And it's not just this sticker. For the first few months of 2023, almost everything on the internet, no matter where you were shopping, was 40% off if you paid for it in Argentine pesos, and the loophole still doesn't seem to be entirely closed. But I'm not here to get you sweet, sweet deals on old people's stickers. I'm here to answer a question. How did this happen? Well, the short answer is that the Argentine peso doesn't really work the way that money is supposed to work. The long answer is, well, the rest of this video. First, let's talk about what's up with the Argentine peso, because this is a wily little guy. They introduced it in 1826, but by 1881 it had lost all of its value, so they replaced it with a new peso. This one lasted until 1970 before it lost all of its value and had to be replaced by yet another peso, which then lost all of its value and got replaced by this peso, which lost all of its value and got replaced by a new currency called the Austral. Then, if you can believe it, the Austral lost all of its value and had to be replaced by the peso again, but not that peso or this peso, a new peso that had a dirty little secret. And that was that it wasn't a peso at all, it was the US dollar. Since Argentina's central bank was sick of coming up with new currencies that inflated faster than my lower intestine on Chili Dog Airlines, they just said, hey Argentina, here's a peso, but since you seem to hate those and keep doing riots about it, we promise to buy it back from you for exactly one US dollar at any time. That way, as long as the central bank kept as many US dollars in its wallet as there were pesos in circulation, they could guarantee that every peso would be worth exactly one dollar. Now, this isn't that uncommon. A lot of foreign regimes like the UAE, Qatar, and Disney World peg their currencies to the dollar to prevent economic collapse. But it doesn't always work. And in case you didn't see where I was going with that, this… didn't work. By 2001, the country was bankrupt and everyone in Argentina went to the bank and said, hey, this country doesn't work anymore, I would like my US dollars now, and the bank said, hmm, well we'd love to buy all your pesos because they're totally still worth the same amount as before, but what if instead of everyone converting all their pesos into dollars, we made that illegal, and instead, everyone kept their pesos and could only exchange 250 of them per month. That's kind of a fun idea, right? And this is where things get a little weird, because if you can only legally exchange a few hundred pesos for the official rate per month, your currency now effectively has two exchange rates. There's the legal rate at which the bank will sell you dollars, and there's now also the illegal rate at which a scary guy in a trench coat will sell you dollars. Because if you want to buy more than 250 US dollars per month, which you probably do because your country's economy is on a slip and slide, you have to buy them from that guy. And that guy is not going to give you as good of a deal as the bank because he's not interested in making Argentina's economy not look like a total trash fire by artificially propping up the value of the Argentine peso. He's interested in buying a jet ski. So for the last 20 years, no one has really known how much the Argentine peso is really worth. Right now, Argentina's central bank says the exchange rate is this, 255 pesos to the dollar. But if you wanted to trade a dollar to someone in Argentina who wasn't the bank, they'd probably give you close to double that. Right now, the black market rate is about 490 pesos to the dollar. But that rate will change depending on all sorts of other factors, like who you're buying from, what part of the country you're in, the physical condition of your cash, and generally, how stupid you look. So this is obviously a headache for Argentina citizens, most of whom want to put their savings in a currency that's not literally having every single year, but it's also a headache for an even more important group of people. Lazy American tourists. For years, using an American credit card in Argentina meant you were being forced to use the official exchange rate, so instead, Americans were starting their vacations off with a visit to some underground black market to illegally sell all their cash for a useless garbage currency that they didn't even want, which is a horrible feeling that you might be familiar with if you've ever been to a Dave & Buster's. So last fall, Argentina's central bank had an idea. What if they made the illegal exchange rate legal, but only for tourists? Basically, the bank would let Visa and MasterCard make purchases at the unofficial rate as long as the card being used was foreign. And this totally sounds like a good idea, as long as you don't think about it too hard. 
Because it turns out you could use this system outside of Argentina, and what actually happened was that online storefronts in a whole bunch of countries, at the very least Germany, Spain, and Indonesia, weren't really prepared. Amazon.de, for example, didn't get the memo. So if you said, hey Amazon, I'd like to buy this 10 euro item with Argentine pesos, Amazon would say, okay, ich werde den Officius zielen, wetsch zilkers verwenden, dir bis gott, dass dieser Artikel 2796 pesos kostet. But then those 2,796 pesos would be charged to your credit card, which would use the tourist exchange rate, meaning you'd only be charged a little over 5 euros. Whether or not this still works on some websites is none of my business, and all of the videos breaking down whether or not this is actually legal are all in German, so I kind of have no idea what you're supposed to do with this information. Happy shopping! So if you're the kind of person who watches videos about things like the time that Argentina gave Germany 40% off everything, you probably like learning so much that you even like learning about things that ultimately don't really matter and aren't really useful. And maybe part of the reason is because it can be tough to independently learn things that do matter and are useful outside of formal education, but that's exactly why I like our sponsor Brilliant so much. They have a fantastic catalog of very, very well designed courses about the most interesting and important subjects in STEM. Like like statistics, logic, computer science, and much more. It'd be easy to assume that these are just wordy explanations and multiple choice questions, but far from it. Brilliant breaks these topics down into small, bite-sized chunks so you can make meaningful progress in learning a massive topic in just 15 or so minutes. It explains these concepts through simple graphics and straightforward explanations, then you apply the knowledge through interactive challenges. Then, as you work through it, these small chunks start building back up into a massive sum of knowledge. This structure really allows anyone willing to try the ability to learn subjects that might seem impossible like vector calculus or gravitational physics. And with their mobile app, you can easily fit learning in those small empty moments in the day when you might otherwise scroll Twitter or TikTok. So if you want to try everything Brilliant has to offer free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash HAI or click the link in the description. The first 200 of you will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription.